Hey guys, Key from Keyland, and today we're talking about our new internal components for the NukaTap FC. The NukaTap FC has been a popular flow control tap. Obviously, it's a fantastic tap that attaches to any standard shank, but we have made some major changes to internally how these work to really make them perform better. And when I say better, what I mean is A, easier to assemble. So because of the over-molded rubber components, they're really easier to attach to the font and make them seal just with a light amount of force on the collet to attach it to the shank. Then the other thing is, is a huge reduction in foaming. So if you've got particularly difficult beers like um, you know some highly carbonated beers or you've got beers which are just being served at a really high pressure for instance, a new flow control mechanism can really handle those situations very, very well. It's still a very compact tap. The way we've made these parts, we wanted to make sure it, it wasn't as big as you know taps like the Chelly tap which have a huge amount of thermal mass and a lot of problems with first pour foam in particular. Um, but the other thing is, it's the only forward sealing tap on the market, which you can also fit in a self-closing spring as well. And the way the pattern is on our particular tap, and the way the Perlick has got their own pattern, it basically means that there's no other way to really solve the problem until one of those patents expire. So a really cool bit of technology in here. And I'm gonna get into the detail and how you guys can enjoy this and even you know upgrade your old taps because we've made these parts backwards compatible. So even if you've got an old NukaTap FC, you can just buy a couple little parts like this, drop them into the tap and you get all the benefits as well. Anyway, I'll get stuck into the design and show you the benefits of how this works. So if you look at the current flow control taps on the market, they all work in a very similar way. I've just got a couple examples here on the table. I've got like a Chelly one here and I've got like our old one, uh, the NukaTap FC. As you can see, they've got a male and a female cone which kind of come together to restrict the flow. So as these two parts come together like that, you basically get a male and a female part like this. And as it gets closer, that gap between the two parts is smaller. And because that gap's smaller, that reduction in the orifice size is what is restricting the flow. So really simple mechanism. Look, here's a chelly tap, for instance. So you take this open like that, and you can see you've got like a, uh, you know, a female uh, cone in there, and then you've got the male part of the cone on the tap goes together like that. Now, I wouldn't go with this older style tap because obviously these are the, the rear sealing taps as well. So these are generally not as sanitary as a forward sealing tap. So generally, you know, this is the way that the future is going with, you know, Perlick and the Nuka taps and stuff like that. Uh, but to give you an example, there's lots and lots of taps which have a similar type of function like that. Look, Micromatic have got some of their own designs, but essentially there's nothing new and there's no new innovations in these flow control mechanisms. All they are are two male and female cone come closer together, but there's a better way to do it. And I'm gonna show you in the CAD how the new design works. So as you can see externally, the tap looks very, very similar. And that's because, you know, all the external parts are exactly the same. So the NukaTap FC body, the spout, the lever are all identical. Where we've made the changes is all these internal parts inside the NukaTap FC. So if you look at the back of the shank here, this is where the beer flows in. So these sort of six holes that you see here radially, the beer comes in there. And I'll show you a cross section to show you fundamentally how this tap is quite different. So as the beer flows in through these six holes, it essentially is forced to change direction twice. Now this is fundamentally important to how the tap works and how it you know, really restricts that flow speed. So what happens is the beer comes in the back and it's forced to change direction once here, so pretty much almost a full 180 degrees, and then another 180 degrees here changes again. Now the reason why that's so important is because they're not relying purely on this, uh, you know, two cones coming together, so this green part and that bit. So obviously when that comes together, that restricts the orifice a little bit, but um, what we're doing is we're relying on the direction change to actually wash off a lot of that flow speed. And the beauty about relying on that is because when you change direction, it's also non-linear. So what I mean by that is the faster the liquid is flowing in, the more speed it's gonna lose as it turns the corners. So we're kind of using the, I guess, the momentum of the liquid itself um, to reduce that flow speed as it comes out of the nozzle of the tap. And the beauty about that is, it means that we don't have to push these two sliding cones so hard. So previously, these cones, you know, when we have this, uh, this blue cone and this green cone come together like that, we'd rely purely on that sort of, uh, that, that reduction in the orifice size. And then we, when we do that, we can end up with more foaming because there's more turbulence created as the, you know, the, the liquid has to pass through this tiny little orifice. But now because we've got this direction change, you know, most of that flow speed is washed off by that 
meaning you know we don't have to push you know this so closed. Now this gives you excellent control over a much wider range of pressures too. So it used to be the case that with some of these flow control taps, when you're getting up to say 30, 40 PSI, a lot of them just would not handle it very well. But now because we've got that direction change losing all that speed for us, you know, it makes it makes it much more suitable for very high pressures or even like highly carbonated beers, which can be very tricky with other conventional flow control mechanisms. The other benefit of using this particular design where we've got this sleeve mechanism moving back and forth on the outside for the flow control means that we have the ability to put a spring down the bore of the tap and actually make this self-closing. So the way our patent is written, it's quite different to the Perlick tap. And I can't see a way that Perlick are ever gonna have this function because of the way their patent's written, but we have the ability to have a self-closing spring in our forward sealing design. And if you look at the Perlick patent and our patent, it kind of covers all the different ways you can make a forward sealing tap uh, with flow control. So I can't see anybody ever coming out with a forward sealing flow control tap, uh, which has a self-closing spring function um, until one of these patents basically, um, you know, expires. But you've got this, uh, you know, the, the shuttle which moves back and forth here. And as you can see, this spring is gonna be pushing against that shuttle to automatically close the tap. So it's a good add-on if you want to have self-closing. You know, definitely if you've got like uh, novices using the beer taps and don't remember to close them completely, it can be a pretty handy feature. Or if you've got particular you know, heavy tap handles or something like that, which tend to, um, you, know, you know, lean forward a little bit, they could, you know, accidentally turn the tap on. But that is fundamentally how our design is different to the other flow control taps on the market. Now, wherever possible, we always try to make our parts as backward compatible as possible. So when we have new upgrades, they work with the old taps. They don't have to upgrade the whole thing and just buy these uh, parts instead. So if you've got an old NukaTap FC, you can easily upgrade it with this part of the video. So I'll show you what we do. You just get this part here, the KL17817. And this is the new NukaTap FC shuttle and male and female cone parts here. So. To get your other tap, you just take it off the font. Probably if you're removing it from the font, you'll, font, you'll use this C-Spanner tool. That's like that. I should also mention these are new tools. We used to have just a seven-in-one tool, which was kind of all right, to be honest with you. It's good because it kind of had everything on there, but the quality of the tool was not really that good. So having a dedicated tool for the job, I find these new tools actually much better. We also have this ring spanner tool as well. This is the one that does up the 5.8 shanks. Um, or any 5.8 uh, nut onto a 5.8 thread. So they're kind of handy. But what you can do is basically take this piece out of the back of the tap like that, unscrew this flow control lever, uh, and then what you can do is either use one of these tools to basically remove this plastic sleeve in here. Because you want to basically kind of hook onto it and pull it out. So you can use this tool, kind of hook onto it like that, and pull it out like so. Or you can use this tool. This one I think is slightly easier if you use this one and basically hook it on there and then we're pulling out that sleeve like this. So once I've got these two parts out like that, then I can get the new uh, FC parts out of bag like this. Now, if you want your O-rings to really last forever, one thing at this stage, you may want to consider putting a tiny bit of uh, lubricant on the O-ring. So that's this one here. Look, it doesn't need much at all, just the tiniest, tiniest little smear like this. And that will pretty much mean you never, ever have to replace that seal ever. So yeah, get that lubricant on there. Then, then you want to get this sleeve part, this new design of sleeve part, and drop it into the tap. Now, you'll notice when you rotate this part here, you'll see there's actually this little dimple in one section, the little the hole dimple there. That hole dimple needs to line up with this part of the flow control level like that. So basically, when you're putting it in, try to get that dimple facing out through this hole here. So I'm basically pushing this together like so, and then I go like that, and now I can see that dimple down in that deep hole there. I can see it there. And when I put this flow control lever on, I'm just trying to line that up. So just do that up like so. And then what you wanna do is get this uh, part of the flow control tap in, drop that in the back. Now, I should also mention, if you're the type of person who likes using um, a flow control and wanting having spring return, the old springs don't work with this new setup. So if you've got this part here, this was the old spring, the KL17985. If you look at that one, that was the old flow control spring for the FC taps. You will have to change to this new design. See, see how it's like more of a parallel spring rather than the tapered spring? So this is the new one that you're gonna have to use. And this one just drops into this part. So this is where you're gonna drop the spring in, just goes into that bore there like that. 
and that means you can spring return the tap. So if I put this on my font and put that pit together, you notice when I pull this tap like so, it springs shut. So if you're the type of person who thinks you can accidentally bump the tap, maybe you've got kids throwing balls in the house or something like that, if the, if the tap hits open, um, you know, it'll automatically close itself as well. So that's kind of like a handy add-on. Look, I find they're really good. If you've got extremely high carbonated beers, sometimes the springs can cause just a tiny bit of turbulence, but generally I find them, you know, to be, you know, a really good option, especially if you're in any instance where you've got kids around or pets potentially knocking the taps or something like that, or you just get really, you know, drunk and then accidentally knock a tap open or something yourself. But anyway, so you can drop that in there like that, put this part in there like that, and then screw this back up onto the tap shank and away you go. So literally the upgrade takes like 30 seconds and really simple, everyone can do that themselves at home. Now it wouldn't be a beer tap video unless I actually poured some beers with this unit as well. So I've already got the uh, Gen 2 parts already in the Nukatap FC and I've got this Nukatap FC connected directly to the keg post here. So I've got that ball lock disconnect to the uh, one and a one eighth thread tap shank uh, unit. So that's there as well. Um, so as you can see, uh, I've got the pressure set at pretty much about one bar and I've got the flow restrictor, you know, which is kind of like, you know, pretty, pretty well closed. As you can see, I'm hardly getting any excessive foaming there at all in the glass. Now that's not much of a test, I suppose, because I've only got the pressure set at one bar and I'm getting a little bit ahead there, that's perfect. However, let's put this under the, un, under the pressure of say 30 PSI, let's crank it right up. So I'm gonna crank this pressure right up to 30 because this is like you know going to be a really aggressive test i suppose and this is where a lot of those uh other fc taps are going to struggle a little bit so i've got the pressure prank cranked right up there so i'm going to turn the flow control uh, lever a little bit further back this time because i don't want it to come out too fast with a bit of a gush turn the tap on look that's too slow it's pretty much nothing coming out but let's say i'll just gradually speed it up there we go so that's probably a nice flow rate like that and as you can see, yeah, that's pouring really well. Um, good laminar flow there. Even at that very, very high pressure, I'm still getting a really great job done. So there you go. Awesome up update to your Nukatap, uh, you know, FC taps. Uh, if you want to hear about any other cool new stuff that's coming out, definitely bottom right hand can corner, hit subscribe now. And the other thing you can do is, uh, you know, uh, jump on our homebrew community group. So go to Facebook, search Kegland Homebrew Community Group and join that one and you can share tips and tricks, tricks on how to use all the gear. All right, that's it and see you guys next time. Bye.